this is Bob Martin with RC Sub and the Nautilus Dry Docks and I just wanted to show you one of my recently completed builds. This is a 132nd scale custom replicas Disney Nautilus. It's uh, 66 inches in length, features an OTW dive module and uh, it's fully rigged for diving. So I just wanted to take a moment and show you how I put this together, um, some of the maintenance and access tricks that I used and uh, give you a good idea about what it's all about. Before I break into the model I wanted to show you uh, a feature that I'm actually pretty proud of. It's the first time I've actually implemented it, uh, attempted to implement and, and successfully implemented it on uh, one of these models and those are the operational breather flaps uh, on the back of the wheelhouse. So you can see they're fully controllable from the uh, transmitter. They add a lot of visual interest to the back of the model. Uh, it's something I think looks really, really good. LED lighting uh, throughout the model. Green in the wheelhouse. Uh, warm white LEDs in the floodlight areas. Um, this was actually, it's a little bit of a topic of debate in the people that uh, love the Nautilus and the Nautilus forums. It's the uh, the skiff berthing light. It, it was in one scene in the movie but not in others. Of course that's sort of the way it goes with movies but for navigation for an RC sub that actually helps a lot. It's shining directly upwards. It really helps the uh, the sub captain help keep track of where his model is particularly if you're running at dusk with really this model is uh, it just absolutely loves to do. So let's crack into uh, the model here now. All right, you can see I've still got power uh, on this model. I wanted to make it easy to turn the model on and off when you haul it in and out so you don't have to crack into it every time you want to turn the power on and off. So actually the, uh, the anchor on this side is uh, sort of a hidden switch. Uh, so you can see everything is powered up right now. Um, when you pull the model out of the water rather than having to get into it right away, you simply push the anchor up and uh, your power is off. So I'm going to turn my transmitter off. Now get into the model, uh, it's extremely easy. The ram serves as a hidden catch. Withdraw it. Simply lift up at the front, slide it forward and the entire top half comes free. I'm going to disconnect the lights. It's got a standard connector. Now you can see the interior layout uh, of the model. Here's some of the, um, the, the interior details. Not a lot of flotation is needed up uh, in the front of the model. This dive module from OTW is uh, four and a quarter inches in diameter, provides a tremendous amount of buoyancy, uh, which is actually extremely good. I don't need to put uh, a lot of foam in here. Just at the aft end, of course, the, the back end of the, uh, the model is quite heavy. That's where all the functional um, bits and pieces of it are. I've got the model ballasted quite high in the water right now, as you'll have seen in the uh, previous footage. Uh, I would actually recommend maybe taking some of these pieces of foam out, get it a little bit more scale of a water line, and that'll actually allow um, less water to have to enter the ballast section to get it to submerge. So that'll save battery time uh, and, of course, save a little bit of pressure uh, that builds up inside. So here's the, uh, the interior. This is the wheelhouse floor and it's completely removable. Uh, it's extremely easy. This is just a, basically a, you know, a set screw. Um, just loosen it off, pick it up and uh, out everything comes. There's two screws in the back. Those are pulled out, lift up and pull back. And that gives you full access to the wheelhouse. To clean it up, of course you're going to be running this in a pond or, or something like that. You don't want to get the pond scum uh, in there forever. These are the, uh, the breather linkages, spring loaded. You can see in the front of the watertight cylinder, this is the push rod actuator. And that basically pushes up against this um, paddle. 
And that's what actuates the breather. So if we look down underneath here, as we're pushing on the paddle, you can see the breathers opening and closing. Actually works extremely well. This is all brass photo etch. Uh, grating allows the air to escape really well. All of the hatches are uh, fully functional on the model, both forward and rear. So moving forward into the lower hull section, you can see this is the main power switch, just really simple, heavy duty uh, waterproof switch. I've dipped this in, um, in some RTV. But this is the, uh, you know, the main switch, and you can see the anchor is what actually actuates it. These main power disconnect right here. I'm just going to disconnect the watertight cylinder, and what actually holds the cylinder down in the front is this brass um, hold down. That gets bolted across the front, goes across these two set screws. Just some simple Phillips head brass screws, very easy. Two screws, and that comes out. To get the watertight cylinder out, <clears throat> you simply disconnect the linkages in the rear. Uh, they're standard connectors. So we can um, pull these out, or attempt to pull these out with my finger, and I'm holding the camera at the same time. There we go. So basically the two linkages have been disconnected now. The watertight cylinder or dive module as OTW calls it is uh, completely loose. So simply slide it forward. Drive shaft came out from the, uh, the dog bone there. And we're going to lift it up and out. And this is the uh, OTW dive module. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a, a pump based system. Here's the main pump, uh, your solenoid valve, <clears throat> all of the electronics that control it uh, are up in the front here. This is your main ballast section. As this um, pumps full of water, the air is forced into the two electronics compartments. So it actually requires the use of uh, bellow seals that are sealed up uh, very tight to contain all of the pressure. This is the rear electronics compartment. You've got your two main servos here for rudder and pitch control, uh, your receiver, your main drive motor, uh, stuffing box, and your two linkages uh, to the rear. Now I've got some desiccant in here, some silica gel, and that just basically, if there is any moisture at all that gets in there, that gets drawn up into the silica gel. And that can be reused to just simply dry it out like in an oven uh, or even on a hot day, it'll, uh, it'll pull the moisture out of the silica gel. So I'm just going to set this aside right now. And now what we're looking at is the uh, main drive battery, <clears throat> nickel metal hydride, 12 volt, 10 amp hour, it's been completely sealed as well. Um, this is the main wiring harness here. Just disconnect it and the entire thing slips out. And this can be charged up uh, using a, a standard uh, nickel metal hydride charger. All of the water drains through the uh, actual ballast vents uh, that the original Nautilus employs. There's drains uh, in here that allow all the water to come out, anything that pools. Here's your uh, main pitch linkage. You can see I've got a, uh, a series of collars on there that actually stop the linkage from moving too far. And what that does is it stops the propel propeller from going too far and hitting the, uh, the model itself. So basically that uh, is in place so that we don't damage the model or bind it up. Um, this is your rudder linkage right here. Everything is very free moving. 
no binding at all. I have a piece of clear plastic in the back. Uh, I actually found some with ribs for some extra stability. Um, that increases the turning ability of this model by a very significant amount. Uh, basically halves the turning radius. So uh, I really recommend it. It's practically invisible in the water and of course uh, once you're done, if you want to display this model, which it's very suitable for, simply pull it out. It's friction fit. Now something else that I did with this model, I really wanted to make sure that you had some good access to maintain everything that goes on in the back. And so if we take a look here, you can see two screws. This whole section actually removes. And in order to do that, there is a uh, a screw right here that holds the rudder in, that's removed. The rudder pulls out of its uh, receptacle in the top of the rudder. These two screws are removed and then the entire assembly simply pivots up and pulls out and that gives you full access to your universal joint uh, and all of the other linkage uh, assembly that's in the back of the model.